So let us have a look at the various antibiotic groups and their mechanism of action. I will be covering this under the following headings that is the definition, the discovery of antibiotics which happened to be an accidental discovery, the timeline of discovery of various antibiotics, the different groups of antibiotics, bactericidal versus bacteriostatic, what are the mechanism of their actions and something about pharmacokinetics and the pharmacodynamics as concerned to the antibiotics and some of the points to ponder which we can at the end of this lecture. So by definition an antibiotic is a natural or a synthetic compound which inhibits the normal biochemical function of various bacteria. It can either be inhibition of the cell wall synthesis or the protein synthesis, inhibition of the DNA replication or the transcription or cellular respiration. And as you all know, the antibiotic resistance is one of the major threats to the public health. As you can see, bacteria uh, was discovered by Sir Alexander Fleming. This is the actual plate which uh, he had left when he had gone for a kind of a vacation or sort. And he had just left a plate of Staphylococcus aureus culture in his lab. And when he uh, came back, he found that a uh, mold had kind of contaminated the plate. And you can see here that uh, you can see near, near this fungal colony that is happened to be penicillium, penicillium notatum. Uh, you can see there is inhibition of this Staphylococcus aureus which is le growing less near the fungal colony and you can see this proper colonies of Staph aureus away from the fungal colony. So what he deciphered from this was that this fungus is secreting some chemical which is inhibiting this bacterial growth and that later that compound was uh, kind of concentrated and he found he named it as penicillin. So this is how penicillin was discovered accidentally in uh, back in 1928 by Sir Alexander Fleming. So this led to a mad rush amongst the various uh, scientists that they started scouring the uh, soil for various uh, uh, organisms which might secrete uh, antibacterial substances or what are known as antibiotics today. So they uh, started looking out for various fungi and uh, various filamentous bacteria in the soil uh, <clears throat> you know, like streptomycin uh, etc comes from uh, streptomyces etc. So this led to a lot of discovery of many antibiotics as you can see uh, somewhere around 1930s to 1980 we had lots of various groups of antibiotics coming up, different classes of antibiotics coming up. But as you can see after this 1980 oxazolidinones, that is the linezolide, then uh, recently we have got very few a new class of antibiotics or new group of antibiotics. So to say only some examples can be bidaquilin and delaminate for tuberculosis. Other than that, we are just playing around with different molecules like making a levo version like levofloxacin and different generation of cephalosporins and or adding uh, various uh, uh, beta lactamase inhibitors like avibactam etc etc so we haven't really got a good new class of antibiotics so to speak and it is uh, not feasible for or what you can say not uh, monetarily beneficial for uh, pharma companies to invest so much into a uh, new class of uh, R&D for new class of antibiotics and then, then the bacteria uh, becomes resistant to it. So you can see in this pic you, the dark colored antibiotics are the one which are bactericidal and the light colored ones are the one which are bacteriostatic. So we'll have a look at what these two terms mean. Uh, you have to know about the beta lactams that penicillin was a first antibiotic to be discovered and it happens to be a beta lactam so these are generally very effective drugs uh, mo many of them work on both gram positive as well as gram negative and as well as anaerobes uh, whenever sensitive they are an automatic uh, antibiotic of choice most of the times they are safe to give in pregnancy they are safe to give in lactation they are they can be safely given in the uh, pediatric age group uh, and also they cross the blood brain barrier pretty well only thing about them is the hypersensitivity has to be checked out for 
for certain beta lactams especially penicillin and sometimes the cephalosporins as well uh, so that is something you need to look out for and then let's proceed for the various classes of antibiotics so as i said penicillin mainly works on the gram positive aerobic bacteria that is staphylococcus streptococcus enterococcus nowadays you obviously don't have that much of staphylococcus which uh, responds to penicillin because staphylococcus after uh, penicillin was rampantly used uh, during the world war ii started developing something known as penicillinase enzyme which is a beta lactamase right so uh, for any kind of uh, beta lactamase producing uh, staph aureus penicillin is not going to work and then we have the amino penicillins which are derived from the penicillin that is the amoxicillin ampicillin i'm sure you must have heard this uh, they have a, a good spectrum against gram positive slightly extended to the gram negative as well um, and then you have the uridopenicillins that is the piperacillin the carb carboxypenicillin that is carbenicillin ticarcillin and you have to know about and you have to know about the penicillinase stable penicillins that is cloxacillin dicloxacillin uh, methicillin nafcicillin and oxacillin so basically if your uh, staph aureus happens to be something known as methicillin sensitive staphylococcus aureus or mssa then uh, dicloxacillin cloxacillin and the other penicillinase stable penicillins become your drug of choice uh, or you can give a combination of amoxiclav that is amoxicillin plus clavulinic acid so whenever sensitive please always use this particular penicillin a stable uh, penicillins or uh, combination of amoxiclav rather than any other drugs because these are going to be the best drugs which are going to act on uh, the methicillin sensitive staph aureus